بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين عما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is the last and final messenger Respected brothers, sisters, and elders, it is a great bounty and great ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has allowed us to come into His home and offer the Friday prayer, uh, especially given the circumstances we face this past year. Uh, let us all thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity, and we pray that inshallah we come back to a sense of normalcy where we can continue to uh, come back to the home of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid offer our ibadat, so on and so forth. With Ramadan past, uh, fast approaching, um, we, many of us know Ramadan as the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the month of the Qur'an, in which the Qur'an completed its entire revelation. But it is also the month of mercy, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And something that I want to speak to, particularly for our youth, inshallah, is this sense of losing hopefulness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or feeling like overwhelmed that you know this hopeless feeling of my sins are too great or that I am not worthy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love or his mercy arguably this is the greatest tool shaitan uses against a believer this sense of hopelessness that you're too sinful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you or that there were so many pious people before us and even during our lifetimes, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, forgive and elevate someone such as ourselves? This is a great, great misconception of the nizam, of the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us into our existence, the purpose of our existence and His love for us. There are a few different reasons why this misconception may, may exist, particularly among our youth. And we don't have time to maybe go over all of them, but I will address a few. One is the sense that during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as well as the Anbiya alayhi salam of the past, that there's a sense that everyone was perfect, that the companions at that time were perfect. It was just a perfect era of, among the Muslims, and only the disbelievers were those that erred or that may have, been, um, may have made any mistakes or anything like that. And inshallah, that's one thing I want to, want to address inshallah. There was a young boy, a very young boy who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he once said, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've committed such a great sin. Such a great sin. Uh, will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yes. But the boy persisted and he said, Ya Rasulullah, the sin I've committed is so great that it's greater than this earth and everything it contains. Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still forgive me? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded, yes, Allah will forgive you. But he persisted even more. He said, Ya Rasulullah, my sin is so egregious and so great that I fear it is bigger than the arsh, than the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responds and said, no matter how great your sin is, it is not greater than the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a reason every day in every prayer we, we begin with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. There is a reason when we look at the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first two are Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. There is a reason that it's very early in Surah Fatiha. It is because this is who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. First and foremost, Above and beyond all, He is Rahman and He is Rahim. And there are daily and consistent reminders for us of this fact. The other potential misconception that exists, or the reason it exists, is sometimes our youth might feel that they're not able to talk to Imams, scholars, or elders with issues that they're going through. I just highlighted the example of the young boy and there was another young man who was speaking with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam once. And as they were conversing, 
um, a young woman walks by and the boy, as he's speaking to Rasulullah, kind of looks away and starts staring at the woman that is walking by. Kind of like a Bollywood movie type of moment, right? Um, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his reaction to this is probably what's most beautiful of the story. Um, most of us probably fear being reprimanded or yelled or scolded at in a situation like this if it were to happen today in front of our parents or in front of an elder. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam simply took the boy from his chin, from his, the lower part of his face and turned his head away. It was a very gentle and very impactful way to deal with a situation like this. So inshallah, we will talk later about certain pieces of advice um, that can help us not lose or not fall into a state of hopelessness um, later on inshallah. And one of these is to find a scholar, an imam, or someone we trust to inshallah talk about any questions or issues we may be going through. And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prevalent as we keep looking for those signs. In Surah Zumar, Ayah 53, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that if it were to come a time in which, if it were to come to a time in which there is a nation that exists that is perfect, that there is no, no sins of this nation whatsoever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that nation and replace it with a nation that does sin but asks for repentance. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to be perfect, if the nizam was to be perfect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already has his angels. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on his journey in Mi'raj, he saw that 70,000 angels would kind of come and go and be doing tawaf in the heavens and constantly in a state of worship in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if perfection was the goal for human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have created us. There was no need for him to create us. It is part of the reason was that we would we would make mistakes but come back and repent to him. And this is one of the most beloved actions by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many other stories and narrations about the, the kindness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The example I mentioned earlier was a hadith. But in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, Rasul, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those that make, commit a sin, Surah Zumar, Ayah 53, those who commit a sin, be among those who repent so that you are the best among those who, who commit sin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's instructions to us are less about don't commit sin, although that is there. It is more of what to do after committing a sin because it is an inevitable part of human nature. So inshallah, let us inshallah realize this, let us implement this understanding and let us inshallah talk about a few pieces of advice that we can implement so that we are in constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for us, His mercy towards us, and His capacity to forgive us. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inshallah, just a few, few pieces of advice, inshallah, that we can use to, inshallah, not have this sense of hopelessness. Um, one of those is always be in the remembrance of Allah. Particularly when we're going to bed or early in the morning, let us take a few minutes, even a few seconds, to just say Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, and Subhanallah. It will help us realize all of the bounties and ni'mats from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's given us, the privilege He has given us, and His Im immense bounties. And when we start to reflect on this, and by starting to do zikr of this, it will help us remember Allah, and more importantly, identify Allah for who He really is, rather than be burdened with this misconception and this hopelessness, inshallah. The second thing that we can implement, inshallah, is our prayer. Whether we're in school, whether we're at our work, whether we're an athlete or anything in between, there's always a path to success. There's always a path to success. There's a lot of different things happening at a time. Uh, if we're in school, for example, we have to take many classes, we have to do extracurriculars, we have to do SATs, so on and so forth. The nizam of this dunya is, uh, for a believer is the same. 
there's acts of worship, there's you know giving charity, there's doing hajj, there's fasting, so on and so forth. But the one thing that we can always kind of point to as our North Star is our prayer. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has mentioned to us, has told us, it comes in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that on the day of judgment, um, when our book of deeds is, is in front of Allah, prayer will be the first thing we are, we are taken to task for. And if our prayer is good, then all of our other deeds will be good. But if there is deficiency in our prayer, then there may be deficiency in our other forms of ibadat as well. So this is a clear sign for us. When we are feeling hopeless, when we're feeling sad, when we're feeling like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not forgive us, let us turn to our prayer and let us make sure that our prayer is sound so that inshallah, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam holds true that when we inshallah are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our book of deeds, that it is that our, if our prayer is perfect, the rest of it inshallah will also be perfect inshallah. The last and final thing is let us, inshallah, find someone who we trust and who we, can, who we can speak to, an imam or anyone of that sort, someone with knowledge. As we, as we mentioned in the examples of the young, young people that went to Rasulullah and spoke with him, conversed with him, shared with him, there was even a young person who once came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, I want, to, I want to fornicate. I want to commit a great sin. Can you please allow me to do so? So can we just imagine for a second, for a young person to have this much confidence to approach Rasulullah with such a question, how warm, how loving, and how nurturing he must have been to create that, that safe space for such a young person. Whether we're elderly, whether we're young, or somewhere in between, we must A, do our best to create that type of environment for everyone around us, and B, align ourselves with someone for, of knowledge, so that inshallah, whenever we are in a position where we're unsure or we're uncertain or we're feeling, feeling the sense of hopelessness, that there's someone to turn to that can help guide us. Just like an athlete or, or a student, you know, there's a coach, there is a teacher, there is a mentor to help them find success. We must, we must also spiritually find that person for us to lead us to that spiritual success inshallah. And that was the last of the, of the few reminders, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us mercy, allow us to be merciful towards others and to gain his mercy in this life and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the success in this life and the next. Arhamu ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr wa ashadduhum fi amrillahi umar wa asdaquhum haya an usman wa qadahum ali ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'in wa sayyida shababi ahl al-janna wa al-hasan wa al-husayn wa fatimatu sayyida nisa'i ahl al-janna wa hamzatu asadullahi wa asadu rasuli Allahumma gfir lal-abbas wa waladihi maghfiratan zahiratan wa ba'atinatan la tuhadiru dhamba Allah Allah fi ashabi na tattakhiduhum gharadan min ba'di wa man ahabbahum fa bi hubbi ahabbahum wa man abghadahum fa bi buhbi abghadahum وخير الأمة قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله يذكركم ادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا محمد رسول Straighten the lines, please silence or turn off your cell phones, Jazakallah Khair, and please pray as if it is your last prayer. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمس عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والسماء والطارق وما أضراك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق خلق من ماء نافض يخرج من مين الصلم والطرائب إنه على رجعه لقادر يوم تبلى السرائر فما له من قوة ولا ناصر والسماء ذات الرجع والأرض ذات الصدع إنه لقول فصل وما هو بالهزل إنهم يكيدون كيلا وأكيد كيلا فمهل الكافرين أمهلهم وإنا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سمح اسم ربك على الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء نحوى سنقرئك فلا ننسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليصفى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح ما تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله